Accurately testing wastewater for COVID could help cities and towns prepare for outbreaks, stock up supplies, or put measures in place to prevent further community transmission of COVID-19. And one company recently receiving a nod from the CDC for wastewater testing is German company Kyogen. Joining us now is the CEO of Kyogen, Terry Bernard, as well as Anjali Kemlani of Yahoo Finance. Great to have both of you on the program. I want to kick things off just by asking you to give us a little bit of a breakdown of your company, Terry, just kind of breaking down exactly how important this technology is, which we've been actually hearing about through most of this pandemic. Well, thanks uh, for the invitation. And Kyogen has been around for more than 50 years now as a dedicated company to uh, molecular testing, both for life science and molecular clinical diagnostic. And so uh, uh, we are specialized in providing uh, laboratories, research centers, academia, clinicians with tests either under what we call a PCR format, PCR has become obviously extremely uh, um, um, popular with uh, COVID-19, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, but also next generation sequencing, and now more recently with what we call digital PCR. And this is the digital PCR technology, which, has, which is at the very core of this wastewater testing that is, going, that is be, going to become so key in the surveillance of this COVID-19 pandemic. Terry, that's a very good point, Anjali, here. On that uh, wastewater surveillance, obviously the CDC relying on that because we don't have more widespread and sort of streamlined testing in the country. What are some of the, uh, what, what are some, what, obviously the benefits there that we can actually test it, but what are some of the constraints in terms of uh, how long uh, uh, before COVID is actually in the area we can actually test for it? Well, I would say, uh, first of all, wastewater testing is not something complete new and is not born with, with COVID-19. This is a technology that has been used, for example, for the surveillance of a potential outbreak of polio disease, for example. Uh, what, what is helpful to understand is that when you have a pandemic like COVID-19, you always have three phases. There is a phase one where there is no commercial test available and where basically uh, um, public institutions like the CDC in the US or other in other countries need to come up with a test. Companies like Kayagen are providing those institutions with components like DNA components. In the case of COVID, it was RNA component to help them preparing and developing the test. And then you have a phase two, where you have the apparition of many commercial tests for COVID, you had PCR tests, but more recently antigen testing, home testing as well. And at the time as well, if possible, the emergence of uh, therapeutic solutions such as drugs or vaccines. Um, but COVID. Terry, uh, this comes at a time, of course, when, you know, there, there's a lot of COVID fatigue that has been kicking in. I mean, I, I'm thinking about the US, Europe, obviously more developed countries, but what are you seeing in your data and what does that tell you about where we are in the pandemic? And, and I was coming there because I was going to phase one, phase two, and this phase three of the pandemic. And obviously it is where, uh, like we are seeing it in the US, but in other countries, this fatigue. But COVID has not disappeared. The most recent statistics in the US only are proving that we are probably at officially more than 100,000 cases of COVID per day. And the non-official statistic, because now with basically so many home tests being done, we have more issues to trace the actual number of tests. So non-official statistics are saying that we are probably on average at 500,000 daily cases of COVID. So COVID has not disappeared. But obviously, the mortality is much more under control. We guesstimate at the moment that the average number of deaths is far too important still, but is down to 300 deaths per day. So what does it mean? Is that probably, instead of uh, constantly bothering the population with uh, extremely restrictive measure, we need to go into what we call surveillance of the, of the virus. And for this, you have different techniques. A very non-invasive, very efficient technique is to test wastewater because the advantage is on a tiny, 
tiny bit of water, you can detect in advance potential coming outbreak of the virus for mm -hmm. a very large population, more than 2 million inhabitants. This is what you are doing currently in cities like New York or right. in cities like Boston. Right. And this is here because it's not impacting the patient, but it's a very proactive way to see if the virus is coming back again. Right. And, and speaking of, of monitoring, there's also another virus, obviously, that people are, wa are watching right now, and that is the outbreak of monkeypox. I know that there are many testing companies that have started jumping on that. Are you doing anything to help with that? Of course, and I'm going to take my usual explanation around the different phases of the pandemic. Phase one, this is where we are currently, where a company like Kayagen is providing the CDC, for example, in the US, with components, in this case, mainly DNA components, so that the CDC can come up with a test and also decentralize this test to the local public health laboratories in every state. We are not at the level yet where we can say that uh, uh, it's going to be a pandemic. I believe that there will be an acceleration of cases of monkeypox because the typical contamination or basically latent phase, incubation phase, is two to three weeks. So to really see if there will be a massive acceleration of cases will be around the week of June the 20th. What is clear today, it depends on the sources, but it seems that cases have accelerated threefold week on week, number one. Number two is that the virus is now impacting countries that were non-endemic to this virus. Endemic countries are mostly in Africa. So it's clear that it's accelerating. And therefore, diagnostic companies like Kayagen, but also others, are currently developing tests, mainly right. PCR, to try also to help mm -hmm. the public authorities to basically tackle that virus again. Yep. Tracking all of this, so important. Terry Bernard, Kayajin CEO, and Anjali Kemlani of Yacht Finance, thanks so much. Appreciate the conversation.